Okay, so Jonathan talked about mesh integrity, and this is absolutely key to us. As you can see, part on the left, there's a big hole in it. Um, that, goes, that will actually go through the printer, and it will print. And it will come out the other side, and it will look like a, like a complete part. Problem is, it's a single laser beam of thickness in, in width. Um, now, somebody's just taken it off the plate. Hopefully, it cracks, and it breaks. If it doesn't, it could be dressed, it could end up going to the patient where it cracks and breaks, which is a lot worse. So these parts absolutely have to be fixed. So this has gone through Polygonica and all of the holes have been removed from the part. <coughs> in all these instances, I've just put the Polygonica function in that we've called to do those with that work and we'll try and skip through that pretty quickly. So on the left, we have a good example of um, a non-manifold body. Um, this, this causes problems all over the place, um, especially when we have bridges. Bridges are a number of crowns have been put into the patient's mouth. There's a missing tooth, so a tooth has completely fallen out. Instead of going for an implant option, which is pretty extreme, they will just put a floating part in between two crowns that are suspended by a pair of connectors. Now, <clears throat> where we normally see that problem is you get manifold bodies where they've created the connectors. The CAD, the CAD system has tried to spl splice the two bodies together. It's done a bad job of it, and it's put triangles where it really shouldn't. And often, those end up in the cavity. If it ends up in the cavity, and we make it like that, then it won't fit in the patient's mouth. So you create a part, and it goes out to the end user, then just tries to fit it, doesn't fit. Wasted surgery time, which we really don't want. So in this example, Polygonica has just ripped out the non-manifold triangle and created a proper solid body. OK, so this is a good example of something Jonathan didn't mention, which is um, floating... Um, shells, so multiple shells within a body. So this bridge, to all intents and purposes, if you looked at it just from the outside, from a viewer application, it would look fine. The problem is, when you actually zoom it, you take it to a transparent mode, you can actually see where the connector is. We've got a second shell within the body. Um, once again, this is, this is a terrible scenario because it potentially creates a void in that connector. It makes it under strength. It could crack in the patient's mouth, which we really don't want. So <clears throat> from Polygonica's point of view, we call the function PF solid purge in significant shells, and it's all fixed. Uh, last, and probably least to be perfectly honest, is the um, incorrect orientation of a triangle. As you can see on the left, we have a triangle that's wound in the wrong direction, and it's fixed on the right. Typically, it doesn't cause huge problems, but it can be an issue. <clears throat> OK, so Jonathan touched on. Um, mesh um, detail and this is really really key to us because we've got tens of thousands of parts coming in monthly and um, <clears throat> that takes up a lot of server space plus the amount of bandwidth it takes as we're shifting these parts around our manufacturing system is huge also the amount of time it takes to process those parts and create laser paths that we can actually then build the parts with goes up massively um, Another thing to also factor in is not only do we remove very small triangles, we remove valid but very, very, very thin triangles with acute, with acute angles in them, which potentially cause downstream problems for, for processing algorithms. <clears throat> and the other point that's worth touching upon that Jonathan, Jonathan didn't mention is that Polygonica's algorithm for simplifying a body doesn't work on a percentage basis. Um, I think the example you used did work off a percentage basis, but it actually works off a distance tolerance of a vertex from its, its plane. So basically you say, I want to remove all, all vertices that go beyond a certain distance beyond the surface. So you actually, high rate of change bodies, areas of high detail, you still maintain those, and you only lose things in the very, very flat areas, which is really, really useful. And that's the function we would call in that scenario. Now... <clears throat> When we've got these hundreds of parts, thousands of parts coming in every day, they all look very, very similar. We need to be able to identify them. So as you can see on the right, <clears throat> we actually create a physical tag on the part. Um, <clears throat> we, create, we take the identifier that comes out of our database. We encode that to base 36. We then put that onto a tag, which we use the Polygonica's subtract function to embed within the tag. We then orientate that on the part. and create two legs that fit onto the body, which we then union all together. So we end up with a single closed body that contains the identifier. Now, <clears throat> the absolute key thing to recognize here is that, as you can see where these cavities are, um, those are considered the marginal area. 
If we were to place those legs anywhere near that margin, the part would be rejected by the customer. If they have to dress it back, they may dress it back too far. Bacteria can get in. It's, it's, an, error, it's an error to the patient. Now, the previous solution we were using, um, before we had Polygonica and, and its functionality, would do all this stuff automatically for us. It wasn't margin line aware, but it made a pretty good guess of where the margin lines were. Problem was, it got it wrong in probably about 5% of cases. So we had to have someone sitting there, day in, day out, checking every single part manually, which consumed hours of time. We just do all of this automatically now. In fact, the whole stream of fixing and checking parts and ensuring that um, supports were in the correct location was taking someone three hours every single day. That's now completely automated. So the two functions we're calling there are union and subtract. <clears throat> so one of the other cool things that we've done with Polygonica, which is, which is <clears throat> slightly off from what other people have done, we've actually used it for creating a nesting algorithm. So as you can see here, this body represents the plate that would go in the machine that we would cinder from. And we've taken a good number of parts and we've nested it into that area. So <clears throat> with our nesting algorithm, um, we're, not actually just try we're not trying to optimize the usage of the plate. Um, the powder is going to be reused, so we're not losing material by doing that way. What we're trying to do is just ensure that we get a number of parts on the plate that we're getting enough in that we're meeting our daily build time for that machine and that we're achieving certain aims. Those aims being that we segregate out the singularly supported units from the multiply supported units. One of the, one of the things to recognize is that with parts that come off a metal AM printer, you have internal stresses. You're taking a laser beam, you're melting that area, you're putting another layer of powder down on top, which is hot. The area beneath it is cold. You get stress building up. What we then do is we shear these parts off with uh, these parts here off, which don't need to be heat treated. These parts go straight into the, uh, into the furnace and get heat treated. So <clears throat> to, to achieve this, we, we use a number of functions. We use the polygonic silhouette function for, cal for calculating the exterior of the part. We break that down into a convex partition. We calculate some um, Minkowski sums. Don't really want to go into that. It's a bit complicated. But after we've done that, we, we use Polygonica's union, 2D union algorithm to create um, containment bodies and collision bodies. Uh, and from that, we can basically nest the whole plate. It's fully within the public domain, and you can very easily use po Polygonica to achieve that. Those are all the functions we're calling. Um, one of the things from the subtractive, additive, subtractive side of things is that you can see down here, this is the abutment. That's the interface that would go into the implant. Um, we don't actually machine the, that, that surface from the model. We have that geometry already stored um, within, within a file. And so what we want to do is actually put some stock material around that. And then we'll put that into our uh, machine and machine it away from that. So we're calling union in that example. And from an offsetting point of view, <clears throat> this, if we put this body into our printer, it would come out exactly like that. It would, the size would be the correct. The issue is that in a metal printer, you get sparks and you get um, uh, material being deposited on the outside of the surface that you really don't want. To remove that, we use an electrochemical polishing process. We basically turn this into an anode. We dip it into a very acidic electrolyte. We run it in there for two hours and we rem remove all of the defects from the outside of the surface. The cool thing with that process is that when you have high rate of change of surface, you get more electric field build, building up, so you remove more material from the, the bumpy regions, the areas you don't want. But you will remove material as well. So we provide an, uh, an offset to ensure that <clears throat> when we put it through that hour or so's worth of electrochemical polishing, it comes out exactly as it needs to. And hub placement, last but not least, <clears throat> what we actually do to machine these parts, we place them on um, a kinematic locator body. Uh, we try and get as many of these parts around it as possible in known locations, but they potentially clash. So we have symmetry by which we can machine those parts. We have, depending on the body, six or eight uh, rotations that we can put them through. We don't want these things to clash because that would completely kill the part. So we use Polygonica for looking at clashes as we place these parts on the hub. <clears throat> And that's it. Sorry, I went through that really quickly. I do, do apologize. Um, there's a whole list of functions of things that Polygonic can do that um, you may want to think about. Um, Polygonic guys are here later, so you can have a good chat with them about it. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.